Welcome to Times of Israel's Behind the Headlines. I'm Miriam Hirschlag. I'm TOI's opinion and blogs editor. And we're here today with the marvelous, multi-talented Liraz Charchi. Hi, Hi Liraz. How are you? I'm great. I'm so happy to see you. I'm here in Jerusalem. You're there in my beloved Tel Aviv. Studio. <laughs> and just a few words about Liraz. She is an uh, actress, a singer and dancer and is incredibly busy these days. Many of us, including me, first met her uh, as a professional uh, figure when she starred in the wonderful 2004 coming of age movie, Turn Left at the End of the World, known in Hebrew as Sofa Olam Smala. She played the lead role of Sarah Talkar, a teenage Indian immigrant who is sweet and delicate and naive. And today, you can see her in the espionage TV thriller Tehran playing Mossad agent uh, Yael Kadosh, who is not so sweet and not so delicate and not so naive. <laughs> and in addition, um, Liraz is a dancer and a singer and sings in Persian. So her first album, a groundbreaking breaking album in of Persian songs is called Naz. And more recently, she has come out with her album called Zan, which is a fascinating collaboration with Iranian musicians. We're gonna talk about all of that. And first, I just wanna talk a little bit about your background. You often are associated with the immigrant community in Israel, uh, but you're a Sabra, you're born here. Yes. Um, actually, there is not a very big uh, uh, Iranian uh, community here in Israel. And most of my life, uh, I've been trying to explore my roots in any way that I could. I was born to uh, parents who arrived from Iran before the revolution. My, my dad arrived to Israel at uh, 1964 and my mom at 1970. They were both teenagers, but uh, quickly they... Uh, they built a family with me and my two brothers, uh, struggling to understand how is it to be Israeli. Uh, by the time that Israel was very, very young, uh, they tried to figure out how can they um, um, improve their language and, and new culture by the time that they actually neglected their, their own roots. I found out that growing up like that was very difficult for me because from one way I felt very Iranian and from the other way I was Israeli and each time I, I moved from my, my home to school I felt like I'm moving country, literally. It was pretty tough for me to understand who am I and what am I, I identify with being Iranian or, or Israeli. And uh, I knew immediately since I was uh, at age four and, or five that I want to be in the arts. I want to sing. I want to dance. I want to write. I want to act. I want to play the piano. And I did it all. Um, but the minute I, I understood that this is not enough just to be an artist and I need to, to look back because I want to I wanna build myself and I have so many layers uh, I understood that I'm carrying a big hole in my heart that I'm trying to fill with my Iranian heritage. So I, I've been asking and I've been growing up on beautiful stories about Iran. My grandmothers and my aunts and my, my parents, of course, told me that Iran is a beautiful place with beautiful views and talented people. Uh, the culture is very special and everything is so beautiful there. But again, another side of Iran I, I can catch, you know, on television and seeing uh, um, Ahmadinejad and extreme regime, Islamic people, um, right. women, women that are muted, they, they cannot sing, they cannot raise their voices. And for me, it was uh, shocking to grow up like that because right. little by little I understood that I'm actually having this Iranian culture and manners in my blood, even though I live in Israel. Well, I know a, a lot of our viewers and the readers of Times of Israel are immigrants to Israel. So this kind of split trying to figure out what is real Israeli and how to hold on to things you care about and your culture 
and uh, and then embrace the new Israeli and children and parents. These are themes that are very dominant for many of us, certainly for me. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about the TV series Tehran, mm -hmm. which uh, just arrived uh, maybe a month or two ago in the U.S. It's with Apple TV. It was shown here. Um, it's riveting. If you uh, anyone who hasn't seen it should see it. And we see you play a complex character there, who's um, among other things a very strong character, a strong female mm -hmm. role, but not in a soft way at all. Uh, quite a strong way. What was that like to play that role? I can I can say that I really identify with uh, uh, Yael Kader's character. Similar to my parents, she. She moved from Tehran to Israel when she was a teenager. And I think the minute I met Daniel Sirkin, the, the genius director who tried to understand if I'm available for this role, if, if, I, if I can do it, I say immediately that I don't have to, to think so much because in the same way that I chose to sing in Farsi and to release albums in, in my uh, in my home language is the same way that I want to play Yael. And nevertheless, you know, she's Tomar's supervisor and commander. She's, she has to, to improve herself in a very masculine environment. She's from one side very determined and, and um, strong. And from the other side, she's very fragile because her emotions are very, are very, very complex. From one hand, she, she has this mission that she needs to, to be very successful in. But who is she? Is she Iranian or is she Israeli? She's been asking the same questions I've been asking myself my whole life. So as, as much as I see, you know, my music uh, closing a circle of, of so many questions that I have and filling little by little the hole that I have in my heart, I understand that Yael and her character and her story is the same story as mine. So um, it was very cool uh, having gotten, this role. Uh, what kind of feedback have you gotten? Uh, anything surprised you from Israeli uh, viewers and, and now in the US, the US viewers? Um, from Israel, US, it was like, boom, you nailed it. I mean, this, this one was written for you. Uh, because most of them are coming to my shows and, and understanding that I had this shift to, to sing in Farsi and not in Hebrew and, and being able to explore my roots in, a, in my own country, which is amazing. And I think uh, the, the audience from, from the US, they haven't seen yet the whole series. I mean, my, my Three uh, very important episodes is going to be shown the next uh, two weeks. So I think them, they're going to maybe identify with my character and maybe not, but I don't want to spoil her. <laughs> yes, maybe no. You'll have uh, yes. to watch it. <laughs> yes. No spoilers here. And what about from Iran? Because I know that it was viewed in Iran and there were some really interesting um uh, responses there because Tehran is a series it's got all the trappings of a mm -hmm. you know of a thriller and it's got that excitement but it does a very interesting and surprising thing which is it presents Iranian characters with nuance and diversity you yes. have these uh, stoned um, young people looking for uh, freedom and and yes. uh, and the uh, underground uh, young people right. from Tehran, which we were so curious to know about. Mm -hmm. I, um, when I released Naz, my first album, uh, which really talks about Naz's uh, Iranian manners, uh, how ladies should be coquettish and from the other side, very determined. And she needs to do whatever she needs to do, but she still gets what she wants. This is, the, this is, another layer of Yael Kadosh that I play in, in uh, Tehran. Uh, when I released Naz, I understood that uh, people from Tehran are starting to follow me, especially ladies who, who got very, very excited about seeing uh, an Israeli singer who sings not in Hebrew, in Farsi, and very free in her own uh, um, way of show her, herself. Um, they were very surprised about it. So I, they got very supportive of my music. 
and I understood that I'm slowly by slowly like understanding how to watch their stories and their uh, posts and and I got inside their their own um, apartments and I saw how they cook so I get very enthusiastic about it uh, especially when they send me like an underground parties dancing to my music and and so I said, I, I, I really want to meet them. I want to meet this, this guys, this, this beautiful uh, ladies. And, and when we met on the set of Tehran, which was in Athens, there were like, uh, you know, maybe 50, 60 uh, actors from, from all over the world who left Iran at some point. And we met in Ath Athens and I I felt like I'm meeting my fellows, you know, like, oh my God, what is going on here? Here they are and we're collaborating together. Just so I understand, the people that you were meeting in Athens knew you uh, from, from YouTube? Yes, definitely. And, and especially, you know, when I'm, uh, if I go back to the music again, because this is the first chapter and Tehran is, let's say, the second chapter of my Iranian, uh, I don't know how to call it, but when I'm touring with a music in Europe, because of, because that my Iranian followers cannot see my shows in, uh, in Israel, they're coming to Europe and I meet them in my tours in Europe, which is amazing. But now it's actually acting with some of them in the show, in the TV series Tehran, and we felt like a big whole family. It was, it was amazing. And from time to time, it was a little bit scary because of course they are not allowed to go back to Tehran if they're participated with some uh, Israeli production uh, artists. It's a complicated situation, mm -hmm. but we kind of left this negative feelings and we really had this uh, great um, partnership of making this TV series um, good. And I can tell you one funny story. Each one of us have other dialect. There are so many Iranian dialect. Um, so we needed like ASAP from, from uh, scene to scene to work on, a, on one dialect, which was crazy because each one of us thought that he's talking Farsi and that's it. But it was a whole different language and we needed to, to fix it to one dialect, to one language. So in your language of music, let's stay mm -hmm. on that issue. I'm really interested in the responses you talked about to your music, but I think it would help us to hear a little bit. And we have two pieces today. One that is focused on power and eroticism, I think. And the other is, is uh, more a, a very women-centered uh, piece. Freedom. So Freedom, Freedom and, yes, and yes. also women's solidarity. So let's take a look at that wild, on fire, erotic inja for <laughs> a little bit of a minute. Also, where, where was it filmed? It was filmed in uh, Timna Park. It's in the south, south of Israel, in the desert, actually. It's a very, it's, I think it's the, one of the biggest par parks in, in, in the world. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. I cannot even imagine. And we were a team of 20 people who arrived at the COVID on a capsules with the taxis and vans to shoot this music video. Inja is a song that I wrote before uh, this world revolution we have now, but actually the words are very similar to, to, this, uh, to these times. It's about having world and personal crisis and sticking to each other with friendship. It's about the understanding that we're not going to be maybe very rich and we're not going to accomplish all of our dreams, but we are stick with each other and supporting each other. I feel now when I'm going to Balfour demonstration in Jerusalem, in Tel Aviv, that this song is, is it was written like it was now. So it's about freedom and uh, releasing each other with love, even though we are letting each other go, we're still friends. Uh, any crisis we, we, we're going to, uh, to go through, we're still friends. 
And it's very important for me to say that uh, I chose to sing in Farsi when I was actually promoting Turn Left at the End of the World, uh, the movie that you've been mentioning at our first um, episode of our conversation. And I, I, I needed to go to Los Angeles. And then I started to work there. I have like agents and manager and everything went well, but it was uh, kind of very boring for me to, to go from audition to audition. So I started to explore Los Angeles and I understood that Los Angeles is actually Teherangeles. And there are a million Iranian people in Los Angeles. And I even found out lots of beautiful family that I have. At that point, I felt that um, suddenly I remember this moment in me standing in the crossroad that like a baby is falling into my arms and asking me to raise her and to sing her in Farsi. The minute I felt that this is what I have to do, of course, I, um, I did it. And I've been, uh, you know, doing back and forth of Tehran, Jeles and Tel Aviv with, with uh, uh, overweight suitcases of music that I've brought from Los Angeles, Tehran, Jeles. And I chose to sing the song of the pre-revolution singers who I really, really recognized with her voices, something very um, uh, courage. They had a lot of courage and they have like thick accent of, of freedom. And that who was the- Who can you name? Yes. Yeah, uh, who Gugush, are the Gugush, which I adore. Haide, uh, Mahasti. Um, most of them continue singing after, uh, after the uh, revolution in, uh, in Iran. And they were very, very smart to just move their life to other countries. Um, and I, I felt that I didn't have this feeling at home. I felt that at home, my femininity was delayed as I see of, of how, how muted for the last 42 years in Iran, uh, women are muted. And um, I had the feeling that I, have, I must tell the stories of my grandmothers who got engaged when they were 11 and, and 13 and, and got pregnant when they were very, very young. They were, they were little girls. I felt that I need to raise my voice and to sing uh, because of this woman in Iran. And, for them and with them and because no, of my grandmothers. You really see that in, in Zan Bizan. Yes, exactly. That's exactly. very much a woman's movie. And I want, I want us to watch a little bit and, and take a look at the coverings and the co on the one hand and the colors on the other. All this naz and 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 naz feelings of of being polite and coquettish and having the right manners to be a Iranian lady. It's nice. I can laugh about it. I can identify with, but. I felt that I need to peel this nas of my body and to reveal myself at the second album that's coming out on October. I felt that I need to sing the, the woman that I'm, I'm actually uh, tried so much to be and here I am uh, peeling this, this layer and showing it to the world. It's very, uh, um, from one end, it's similar to, to my story and even 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 though they are covering themselves they're so beautiful so i felt i can uncover and take off the the chador i'm very um support of this new wave of iranian ladies who are taking off the scarf and calling for freedom so actually zan bezan is a song that calling to each one of us ladies to raise our voices and to fight for freedom by dancing, singing, and rejoicing. Nothing special as just being free uh, to be the women that we want to be. 
I, I know that you uh, that this is a collaboration and it's a very difficult or let's say delicate one because there was um, involvement of Iranians. Can you tell whatever you can tell about mm -hmm. that? what mm -hmm. was involved? What was the contribution of yes. other artists, of Iranian artists? The minute that I understood that I'm going to uh, go for it, just to do my, my biggest dream is to write an album with Iranian artists from Iran. I said, okay, it's going to be easy because I'm in touch with them. I can say high five in my tours. And uh, I'm in touch with them on a daily basis. I mean, on Telegram, Instagram. I mean, they're here. I, I don't agree with the, with the word like enemies, country. I don't agree with that. I, I love them. They love me. We all love each other, support each other, very curious to visit each other country. So I said it's going to be very easy. And I actually post that I'm looking uh, for Iranian artists and players within instruments, Iranian instruments and more. And it was very easy. They approached me and we started to write together an album. But then all the anxiety and uh, um, suspicious, uh, I don't know how to call it. It was crazy. It was a sleepless night of being afraid that someone will hurt one of the artists that I'm working with. And or my family got forbidden. Some of us got forbidden. It was crazy because as much as I get deeper into this project, People told me, Liraz, you have to take care of everyone. Some of them said, I don't care. I'm going to jail anyway because I'm, I'm, going, I'm not going to participate with this extreme regime. And some of them told me, I, I will give you my song, but I cannot write my name on the song. So I'm bailing out. Uh, some ladies, uh, women that was writing with me lyrics were asking me to... to, to give them with other name credit. So many things that made it like a roller coaster. It was so crazy for me to understand why the hell am I doing what I'm doing? But each time I had the same answer to me and to them, that it is the only way we can support each other with our love. And this is the only way to be artistic and to build this bridge of this crazy situation between these two complex countries. Um, so it was re really stressing and, and, uh, the fact that at the same time that I needed to finish the album, uh, I was in touch with, uh, with my fellows, Iranian actors, uh, on set in Tehran. I think it all mixed together and gave me a lot of, uh, confidence that I'm doing the right thing. And the album is almost out, getting great reviews. And I'm so proud of my Iranian friends that uh, did it with me. I, I really think that mission accomplished. And, uh, and I think it's the best way to do what we need to do in these crazy times. That's an amazing story. And it's so, it you. says so much now about our world and how, on the one hand, we have these formidable political um, crises and yet individual people can be in touch uh, more and more through some, uh, at least some of the ways are, are somewhat safe, we hope, we hope for the people uh, in Iran. Um, you may not know this, but we actually, the Times of Israel has a Persian language edition. And uh, so some of the people watching this will be our readers. So, uh, to take us out here, maybe you can give a message in Farsi, in Persian, to any of our viewers that might be watching either yes. in the Iranian di diaspora or perhaps in Isfahan. What would you like to say? Salam be hamei shumai azizam dar Iran, Israel va jahan. Man khali khali dusse daram. Va khushhalam ke in jaumadi. I think anybody watching that could understand that was a message of peace and love yes. and I want to thank you so much thank you. for uh, being with the Times of Israel. It was a pleasure. Take thank care. You, Miriam. Good Take luck care. with everything.